the next topic we want to talk about it is something that we've been hinting at for a while in terms of how are you going to do this there's been the the a new saga named um called the mutant saga brian this is this is just a rumor this is not confirmed i don't believe no um but this is something that we've alluded that would happen um i've gone as far as saying that this could be kevin's last hurrah the mutant saga this is something that he gets to do all by himself now my concern brian and again and we said this a while back that this is going to take a while forever for it to come out they've they've just teased it just now with miss Marvel. Hopefully, for the love of God, we don't hear the damn theme music anymore because they're getting craving. Now in 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 in, in She Hulk, you see, you hear the Avengers joint. Now everything, come on, man, you don't gotta, you don't have to do that, yo. You don't. Anyway, the mutant saga. How are they gonna do this, Brian? Because first of all, we already know one thing from, from Jump: they can't mess this up. Kevin Feige can't mess this up. But also, he can't make it look like what we've got. It has to be um, with regards to the comic books, we have to get closer to that than what we've gotten in the live action because they totally went a different route in terms of the look. But they kept some of the essences, essence of the, the characters. Some of it, they didn't really explore too much. They just went with what was dope or what people reacted to with Wolverine and certain characters, like Need or whatever. How is it going to be different, Brian? Do you expect a, a, a drastic difference in the reintroduction of the mutants into origins of certain characters? How do they do this, Brian? What has gone through your mind in terms of how you would approach it? Oh, what's what's gone when I saw this this story that phase seven is going to be called the mutant saga, and it basically is going to you know the, the X Men are going going to dominate content. First thought is I think we're going to be right. we're going <laughs> to be dead right because if they are taking an entire saga. And basically saying we're going to put a lot of our, indivi our individual Avengers storytelling aside and just give you several years content. Then we are going to be right because that means series, Disney Plus movies, and theatrical movies that are all linked and all tied to the experts, which is exactly what we told you they yeah. were going to try to do. Yeah, so yeah. that's the number one thing that crossed my mind was like, yeah. that means there might be hope for things like our Wolverine anthology series or something like it, that there would yes. be certain characters will get big screen treatment, certain characters or pairs of characters or subgroups of characters will get series. Some might get Disney plus films. We might get more animated, like it is big enough to support that. And if you pick and choose correctly, absolutely, you can pull that off in a way that yeah. even the Avengers right now, you just don't have enough yeah. truly star level content to go around. So yeah. that was my first reaction is that they actually are gonna try to synchronize and force you basically to have Disney Plus and it forced you like you literally are lost unless yeah. you have the service to go <laughs> along with buying your tickets yeah again all this makes sense because the mutant universe is quite huge a lot of storylines and if you watch the animated series there's a whole this this time travel there's a whole bunch of stuff that you got yeah. out of space it's crazy but it's all dope a lot of it is dope the way they pull this off. And it's all about the characters, Brian. The characters is what concerns me because you can't mess with the look of Wolverine. 
but for certain characters, you can't change who they are. Certainly, they can't be all one thing, right? Storm. Um, but there, there have been rumors of possibly um, characters like Professor X and Magneto being not Caucasian. What are your thoughts on that, Brian? And how are they going to make it work? Because they can't be in terms of some the, these two characters' origins. They can't be what they were in the comics. Oh, at least I don't think so. But what? How do you think that go, that's going to go? I, I think it's easier for for Charles Xavier than it is for Eric Venture. Um, to me, Xavier, the role that he plays, the time that he grows up in, the viewpoint that he develops. You know, he's obviously. I mean. Look, I mean, the original incarnation, right? He's kind of an allegory for Martin Luther King anyway. Yeah. So that doesn't seem like a huge reach. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's be fair. I mean, the allegory was Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, right? That was kind of like when they built these comics and conceived of the idea, like it was actually based on two oh, African-Americans, yeah. right? So like, if you did it that way, I see where you're getting that from. Now, my only issue is obviously with Magneto, there's this sort of Nazi Germany Holocaust you know, origin that the character has embodied and that trauma and that experience guides some of his rage later on towards humanity and why he acts more totalitarian versus saviors more peacekeeping so that i struggle a little bit more with that because if you're gonna if you're gonna re reroute all of that you obviously can't really use the holocaust as his origin you're then gonna have to root it probably i would think somewhere in the civil rights movement and that's going to have to be the original catalyst for why he feels the way he does. Mm. I'm not saying it's impossible. And I think like it's one of those things where we've been pretty lucky in the sense that the animated versions and voicing the two characters were very evenly matched and portrayed. Mm -hmm. Getting Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen at a time we got them in their career, they were both similarly aged very evenly matched, similar kind of theatrical backgrounds. They were very good foils for each other yeah. on screen. So at the end of the day, if you're going to do that, that's the key. You, you, you know, it's like, I tend to think, honestly, though, if we're talking about it's a phase seven, it kind of throws more cold water on the Giancarlo Esposito rumor. Because again, if he's 64 now, yeah. and this isn't starting until phase seven, you really going to start when he's like 72 or 71? Like, that's a little rough. So, but my point is you're going to have to have two contemporaries, right? You're going to have to have two contemporaries who, when they're on screen, it just crackles. And mm. in a weird way, sadly, we may have already used up one of those, which is Jonathan Majors is already playing Kang, so he can't do one of these roles because he probably could definitely carry one of them. But that's what I mean. You need two guys who you're just like, I can't look away anytime they're sharing the screen. The screen yeah. If that's the case, who cares what color they are or what race they are? That, that's you know yeah that would be my answer to that but but you're yeah right. you if you if it's off by like 10 percent, the whole thing can come crashing down in a hurry and you can't be wrong about that yeah man there's so many steps that they have to take because you i would assume that you're not going to get the x-men boom right there in the first movie no i don't think so at least they're going to be taking steps towards a, a big Avengers moment. Yeah, I see X-Men is the team up, don't you think? Like X-Men is yeah. the culmination of the saga, not the beginning. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I think it should, at least in my view, had it, it can't be done justice, then Justice League. You can't, uh, we can't do none of that. I don't want to see have... the Phoenix saga either. I'm, I'm good with that for a while. Let's leave that in the bag. I hear you, Brian. <laughs> I hear you. But if you were to do it and any if you were to do it the way they did it in the animated series, I Brian, understand that. Yeah, which was amazing. Yeah. Me, that that's the way it should have been done. But 
Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Wait for a while. There's other stories to tell, other conflicts, other things to do that can play out for some time. Um, Because we still, what we're leading towards and hasn't happened yet is uh, no more, no more mutants. Yeah. So that's going to be a while. I don't know. My, 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 my selfish thing. I just want a good gambit. I was, I love that guy. I love the character. I love how he's played in the animated series. Taylor Kitsch was miscast, <laughs> you know, and I just, and I, I, I knew, like, I'm so glad the Channing Tatum thing never happened because I don't think he would have been good in the role. He would have looked like a Gambit. Looked like, but he doesn't, he doesn't emote Gambit the way that I think. That, that character has a very Cajun and distinctive swagger to him that, I don't know, for whatever reason, as a kid, I, lo- I loved, I actually spent time learning how to throw cards like he did. <laughs> <laughs> actually still can a little bit like throw cards across the yeah. room but like i ever do it i don't know that's like one, the one character i hope that, that that they do really well i actually think by the way i think glenn powell could be a very good game that's glenn powell where is he from uh from top gun maverick he's hangman ah okay 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 hey man when it comes to casting these characters everybody knows where i stand pretty much with wolverine and cyclops um even storm the wonder why i think will be perfect for that role that because we we assumed a while back that there was there was other uh, um, actors that was cast for black panther uh wakanda forever yes and she's actually a a warrior right In, in in the movie yeah. So we're still on a search for fine. which is yeah, fine. Yeah. They don't they there's no need to force Storm into Wakanda forever. Yeah, especially not now. Especially since we know at some point we're gonna get the Wakanda um um Chichala's son is gonna end up marrying marrying a uh, storm. Chichala's son. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. It's gonna it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. Um, I, think line, I think the lineup will be a little different too. I think you know that that one of the things they would be smart to do is like look at hey that you know they look at what Fox did with who they put on screen already. Some of them will be the same, right? You're not gonna. I mean, there's gonna be Wolverine, obviously, but there's other characters they didn't really use that if you wanted to lead with, you know, like throw Jubilee in there. That's fine. Like we never really saw a live action Jubilee other than the cameo in the first movie. She didn't do anything. Like, you know, like I said, if you want, um, if you want to use Gambit, he hasn't really been used that much. If you, you know, I mean, honestly, even Rogue, the way they portrayed her with Paquin was not really Rogue, you know? So it's like, you know, morph, like you could do character, you know, that we, you know, that we really didn't see live action before and just keep a few of the core that you have to do this with. I'm fine with that. And then if you later on want to bring in, you know, some of the big, some of the names that we've already seen, that's fine. Like if, yeah, yeah if you don't show me the you know, storm right away, you don't show me Jean Grey right away. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me neither. I, I, you know, I don't. I just want this to be done right. That when we do finally see them all together on the screen, and when he's formulated that team, that it is a big moment um how they're going to go about that that's the question you know this is going to be step by step hopefully they don't rush it um but it's going to be a very eh, treading lightly sort of situation for them because they they can't afford to mess up um especially with the the like people like wolverine and stuff like cyclops i think is a dope character um and he got no love. Oh, <laughs> he got and also no love. Taron, Taron Edgerton pissed all over Cyclops. He was like, I don't want to play that guy. I'm like, he's not that bad. Well, he doesn't want to play because he says, you know, you know, when you're acting, the eyes tell you a story and because you don't see his eyes. But, you know, I never oh, saw the yeah. guy in, 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 in the animated series eyes. And, and, you know, he's just calling Gene all the time, you know, so... But it, uh, that relationship was dope anyway. And, and I never saw and Darth those... Vader's. I never saw Darth Vader's eyes except for two seconds. Didn't really hurt my enjoyment of that character. Yeah, exactly. So he wants Wolverine. You know, that's the one he wants. I know. You know. Okay. Yeah. But 
there's somebody better out there. There's somebody better out there for that role, man. Um, yeah, I like to a lot to to really think about when it comes to the Mutant Saga. This conversation is not going to end here. I got two questions uh, for you. Uh huh. Do you think how much of it do you think is set in modern times versus past period some period pieces similar to how first class kind of went through history to get to get to today i think you need to do it in modern times okay again the way you can explain their absence is professor x doing that questionable stuff because he has to because he can that's how you explain it easily. And then you'd be like, yo, this dude, then you understand why people are upset. Like, imagine him explaining to somebody why he had to do it. Okay, tell everybody our secret then. See what's gonna happen. So you know? when you you hatched this idea and you kind of been putting it out there, it got me thinking about ways to play around with this universe. Oh, my second main question. Do you think they if it is a phase seven unto itself, do you think they announced it at D23 this year? We've, we've been maintaining we would get mutant content, but did, that's kind of far out to have three phases already on the table. Um, I don't think so. I mean, we have said that there may be shows announced for that, but I think it will be more Doom centric. So perhaps we might. I'm I'm gonna go all I'm gonna go out there, Brian. I'm gonna roll the dice and say we're gonna possibly get silver a silver surfer galactic movie. Whoa! Before all before right. we get me before we get mutants, because <laughs> they wanted they they've been saying they want to go cosmic. This is how you go cosmic, you know. And and, and you want your tragedy? Do the silver surfer. You want that genre? Do try do silver surfer because that is tra tragedy, <laughs> you know. So. The mutants, I think they're going to take their time with it. Again, Brian, it's not something that you announce and then you mess up with, with casting. I think they got to be very careful how they go about it. I think announcing something like that in D23 is going to be probably too soon. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they if they say Phase 7 Mutant Saga and no dates, then that's cool. Yeah, um, well, I just meant like would they? Yeah, that's all I meant. I didn't mean that they would have a full lineup to share with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, so then about the 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 Professor X doing shady stuff. So I actually wondered, could you do a little Cobra Kai on the X Men and actually start or tell more of the story from Magneto's perspective as opposed to Professor X's perspective? So you would make it basically right. So in Cobra Kai, like the story flips and Johnny Lawrence is effectively the protagonist and you, you basically retell Karate Kid, but with his eyes, what if you made Magneto the central character and you actually lived it and breathed it a little bit more from his viewpoint to where you were more sympathetic to how he looked at the world and X was kind of like in your way. And he almost becomes like, not the bad guy, but you're kind of like, why is this guy always laying down for the I don't know it just got me thinking like things you could play around with in terms of whose eyes would be the storyteller that makes a lot of sense and and, and I think with Magneto even in the comic comic books and the animated series you understand where he's coming from yeah he's the more interesting of the two characters because you know he's he, he he's an enemy for Professor X but at the end of the she, you know, that's his boy too. Exactly. He has that's a his, sense of honor. Yeah. And for certain situations, you know, he's not going to do, he, Magdalena's going to do the right thing, right? Depending on the situation, especially when it involves Professor X. You so yeah. About, yeah. You know what got me also thinking about that? I've been watching, I've been catching, I'm so late to the game. I've been, I've been binging Yellowstone. Okay. Uh, over the summer, great show. Not that it, that's not that's not news to anyone, but he, Kevin Costner is not a good dude in that show. Like he is not a good guy. Yeah. He is as much a tyrant as anything. 
But man, you root for him and you root for all his henchmen to kill everyone in every episode. <laughs> I'm just telling. So it's like, that's what I mean by you take a character who's twisted, who has, a, who has a code, who has a sense of honor, who has a sense of family, but he does this gnarly stuff, like evil stuff. But he does it in a way that you're like, yeah, get him, do it. Like, <laughs> that's what I mean. Like Magneto is kind of like that. Like Magneto yeah. does things with a passion and a dedication to where you're like, you find yourself rooting for some pretty bad things depending on how you shoot it and how you yeah. show it. And I think that could be an interesting way to, to start this is just flip it and almost make the X Men like you're staring at Scott Summers, maybe in Wolverine from the other side before you actually get to the more traditional view by the end. I don't know, just a thought. It's a very interesting, and, and that's what you, that's what it's going to take, Brian. It's going to take those interesting sort of mm -hmm. perspectives in order for people to be like caught off guard because we shouldn't be expecting anything, right? Because um, if we if we start with expectations, we tend to get disappointed. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, with Wolverine, there's an expectation. I'm hoping that they, they go beyond what we've gotten. To me, this version has been somewhat tame. It, it was let loose a little bit in Logan, but there's more to Wolverine than just his rage. He, he's a, he, the dude is an assassin. He has fighting skills. He, there's more to him than that. And um, how are they going to top someone whom everyone has thought nobody else can play this character anymore? Yeah, yeah. but like my answer to that is the Joker. My answer to that is Batman, right? Like these are characters where we've had actors who embody the role or even, even Superman, right? Which we haven't topped yet, quite honestly, but yeah. there's been actors in these roles where you're like, nah, that's it. That's the performance. And then someone comes along and yes. finds a different version where it's not really competing with that. It's just its own greatness. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what happens with this so-called mutant saga. Um, one thing before we wrap up, Brian, we keep hearing the word mutant, 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 mutant. Um, there, there has been talks of the possibility of X-Men not being used yeah. because of whatever world we're living in right now. Yeah, we started talking about it. So how disappointed would you be if that is taken away from us? Yeah. I mean, I've said before, I think it would be sad. I mean, I, I understand like we live in a world where the gender consciousness is so high and X men has men in it and they're not all men. I get it. Um, but like I said, I just think that the, the name isn't really about the gender to me. It's about the, the symbolism of the characters and the stories and, I don't necessarily think there's harm in, in including it. And they are including it in X-Men 97. That's not called Mutants 97. It's called X-Men 97. So yeah. if they're not afraid to use it in the animated world, why, why, why shy away from it? Um, and I feel like Kevin, I haven't kept close tabs on his public language and in interviews, but I feel like he's using the word X-Men. Like when he's asked about it, he does respond as, as X-Men. So I don't know. I mean, I, although that being said, like if you were naming a saga, you couldn't call it the X-Men saga. You'd have to call it like the X saga. So in that case, maybe mutant saga actually is a better title for a collection of projects because yeah, yeah, yeah. it just people identify what that is quickly. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I've said before, I, that's not one that I think could be shelved just because there is a gender in the title, because I don't think it has anything. I just don't think that's a negative. Yeah, yeah so yeah oh my god again this will not be the final discussion on this saga or this uh the x-men it is always going to be a discussion let's see what happens at d23 let's see if our my prediction of a silver surfer movie uh comes to pass because it starts off with uh the phase six starts off with fantastic four and from yeah. that we we don't we have a lot of empty slots there so Fantastic Four, you usually associate Silver Surfer with that uh, with that family, with those characters. So let's see what happens. And Galactus have 
Galactus has great respect for Rich, Reed Richards. I'd love to see how that um that uh, that that happens. That respect comes in from Galactus, someone who seems like if you go go to the Fantastic Four um, animation show, Galactus looks at us as as roaches. Like the way we look at roaches, he, that's the way he looks at us. So how does he come to respect Reed Richards um, at the end of that? So that's gonna there's a lot of things story to tell, man. And um, I think it's finally um the right time to get because we, listen we're gonna get adam warlock i don't know what happens at the end of the galaxy uh um, guardians of the galaxy part three that'll be interesting there's a lot of things happening um and again they've said they wanted to do more cosmic and there's nothing more cosmic to me anyway than um silver surfer so uh let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all that brian any last words before we sign off no uh it's 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 going to be exciting and i don't want to diminish x-men 97 either because if they're literally continuing that series that'll be a nice nice appetizer for for some live action stuff if that if they can live up to the standard of that show when it comes out next fall i guess is what they're yeah they're yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how, how, the quest that they go on to find professor xavier if you've seen the last episode of that series is a is is a tough one in terms of because you hear professor x talk to each of his x-men and how he um connects with them and uh it was pretty dope it was pretty dope so i'm looking forward to seeing how they go about going and and, and then magneto is going to be their their leader so it's going to be very interesting how they pull this off brian uh but yeah that's our show for today we'll see you next time on the Jet report